Assembled guests, please join me in welcoming the class of 2023. We introduce this year's commencement processional led by Shabon Marie St. Laurent. <laughs> Please welcome the faculty of the University of New England's College of Professional Studies. Please welcome the president of the University of New England, James Herbert, the dean of the College of Professional Studies, Beth Taylor Nolan and the Platform Party.
Thank you. You may be seated. Good evening and welcome to the University of New England College of Professional Studies commencement and hooding ceremony. It's good to gather here in the Girard Innovation Hall to officially celebrate your academic accomplishment and acknowledge this important rite of passage. And I would also like to recognize our graduates who are not able to join us this evening in Portland. We are live streaming the ceremony for their participation. So congratulations, class of 2023. You've made it. From different perspectives, we have watched you grow intellectually, personally, and professionally as a result of your learning. We have watched you tackle difficult course content, juggle multiple roles and responsibilities, and keep moving forward achieving your educational goal. Your perseverance has paid off, and now it is time to celebrate. You can celebrate. Earning a graduate degree takes a lot of hard work, commitment, a bit of good humor, and lots of support when things don't go as planned. A special thanks tonight to your family and friends who have gathered here to honor you. You can now celebrate that they are done. <laughs> so let me now take a moment to reflect on tonight and tomorrow's events and the transition and symbolism associated with these ceremonies. Commencement and graduation events represent tradition, a custom passed down from generation to generation, a way to publicly acknowledge academic achievement. It is within this context, that of tradition, celebration, and the recognition of this important rite of passage that we gather here. Graduates, please keep in touch. This is not the end of your tenure with UNE, but rather the start of the next phase as UNE alumni. We welcome you to the alumni community and look forward to continuing our engagement with you as lifelong learners. And finally, once again, congratulations. We are so very proud of each and every one of you. And now I would like to invite Dr. James Herbert, President of the University of New England, forward to offer his remarks. Good afternoon, Nor'easters. Good afternoon, you did it. All right, congratulations to all of you and welcome to the University of New England. I know for some of you, this is your first time on campus and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this very special ceremony honoring our class of 2023 in the College of Professional Studies. Graduates, I know many of you have traveled long distances to be here. I was just talking with people from Texas and Virginia and California and Utah and Amsterdam and South Africa and Dubai and all over the place. It is just amazing the scope of the people represented in this room. So welcome to all of you, those of you who are from Maine, from nearby, and those of you who are from distant parts all over the globe. We are very happy to see you here. Although your coursework was completed online, you will always have a home here at the University of New England, here in Maine. I hope you will take some time to explore our campus and this beautiful city of Portland. I know for some of you it may be a little chilly out there, not used to this, uh, but uh, for me, after having lived in Maine now for six years, it's a little warm to me out there. I'm starting to sweat, so it's all relative. And I hope you will visit us again and often. I'm also pleased that we're joined by so many friends and family, the people who have supported you in this journey. Parents, grandparents, spouses, children, and other loved ones, thank you 
for supporting your students in their pursuit of a graduate education. Let's give it up for all the folks that have supported you. I also want to make sure that we welcome those folks that are watching online. Whether you're a graduate student, a friend, or a family member of one, please know that you are with us in spirit today. In addition, I welcome Dean Taylor Nolan, the, the dean of our uh, professional studies college, her faculty, the leadership team, and our professional staff in this amazing college. I know how proud of our graduates you all are. Thank you for the role you played in transforming our graduates into the professionals that they are today. So let's give it up to the dean and all of the faculty. At UNE, our driving mission is to equip students with the knowledge and skills to play meaningful roles in supporting the health of their fellow citizens, the communities to which they belong, and the natural world. And I can say with full confidence that the individuals we have gathered to honor today are ready to do their part. Graduates, through hard work and dedication, you've embarked upon and completed one of our rigorous programs, all while keeping up with the other responsibilities in your busy lives. In addition to completing your coursework, you produced original research and have accomplished accumulated countless hours of field study in your respective disciplines. Many of you have done this all while working full time or juggling even multiple jobs while serving as caregivers and parents and fulfilling many other important roles in your lives beyond your studies. I know how daunting this balancing act can be, and I applaud you all for managing it. Whether you've completed one of our advanced graduate studies certificate programs, a master's degree program, or a doctoral program, you have challenged yourself to gain specialized knowledge in your field, and you have succeeded. Now, bolstered by the new knowledge and skills you've gained, you are ready to make an impressive and lasting mark on our world. And it is a world that needs you, a world hungry for the expertise and leadership that you can offer in order to address the multitude of challenges that we all face. Whether you've earned a degree in education, applied nutrition, emergency management, healthcare administration, health informatics, public health, or social work, your field needs innovators, critical thinkers, and team builders. It needs you. You're going to do great things, I know that. But first, please enjoy this weekend. As you look back on all you've learned and all ahead of you, be proud of yourself. You've earned the right to be proud. Although you leave us now as students, you'll always be part of the UNE family, so please stay in touch and visit often. Thank you and congratulations to you all. Now I'd like to ask our speaker, Douglas Beam, education doctoral candidate, to please come to the podium. Douglas completed his Doctor of Education program while living in the Netherlands. He earned his bachelor's degree from Anderson University in Indiana and a master's degree from the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota. Douglas is currently the associate director of member school engagement at the Global Online Academy. Distinguished faculty, trustees, family, friends, supporters, and fellow graduates. Far away in the heavenly abode of the great god Indra, there is a wonderful net which has been hung by some cunning artificer in such a manner that it stretches out indefinitely in all directions. In accordance with the extravagant taste of the deities, the artificer has hung a single glittering jewel at the net's every node. And since the net itself is infinite in dimension, the jewels are infinite in number. There hang the jewels glittering like a star in the first magnitude, a wonderful sight to behold. 
If we now arbitrarily select one of these jewels for inspection and look closely at it, we will discover that in its polished surface, there are reflected all the other jewels in the net, infinite in number. Not only that, but each of the jewels reflected in this one jewel is also reflecting all the other jewels so that the process of reflection is infinite. That version of the story is told by Francis Cook, comes from the intersection of Buddhist and Hindu mythologies and dates from about the sixth century. It speaks to our interconnectedness and the human capacity to see the reflections of others in ourselves. The graduates gathered here today represent some of the most interconnected and people-oriented pro professions. Today, the 490 of us gathering here or joining from elsewhere are celebrating earning Doctor of Education degrees, Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study in Education, and Master of Science in Education degrees. Our colleagues in healthcare, nutrition, and social work celebrate the conferral of degrees of Master of Science in Applied Nutrition, Master of Science in Health Informatics, Master of Healthcare Administration, Master of Public Health, and Master of Social Work. There is a lot to celebrate, and I'm honored to be chosen to share a few words about what connects us. I've spent the last few years researching, interviewing, thinking, and writing a lot about belonging. Who is invited, included, accepted, respected, and supported in the places where we work, teach, and learn? Belonging seems like a concept that we should be able to understand easily enough, right? In fact, thinking back on a childhood infused with lessons from Sesame Street, a certain song comes to mind, and I wonder if I might uh, if you might help me out with a little fill-in-the-blank quiz. Are you ready? I'll start, you finish. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things doesn't belong. And there you have it. Implanted in our heads from a very young age. If you're not like the other, you don't belong. And I'd like you to hold those two thoughts in your head for a moment and think about the tension between them. On the one hand, the idea of our interconnectedness, and on the other, our very real and human propensity to classify by shape, size, color, age, ability, you name it. And as you do that, I wonder if you can think about someone who maybe hasn't had a very easy journey. Maybe that's you. Or maybe it's someone who is very different from you. Think about the journey that individual has taken. Where do they fit in in our web of interconnectedness? Sometimes we can learn by looking outside our own disciplines for inspiration. So I want to turn to the world of user design and customer experience for a moment. Designers sometimes use what is called a journey map to visualize and understand the end-to-end -end experience of a customer's interaction with a product or service. The process of journey mapping includes documenting the details of the user experience. Journey mapping helps identify pain points and areas for improvement in the customer experience, as well as opportunities to create positive interactions and build customer loyalty. Similarly, we can think about our own interactions with our students, our colleagues, our clients, our patients, Every interaction they experience in our schools, clinics, and offices can reinforce or erode their sense of belonging. If someone feels heard, understood, and valued by us, they are more likely to feel that sense of interconnectedness. I wonder what would happen if we took everything we know and all that we've learned in the last few years and with all the empathy we can muster, apply our competencies and listening skills to understanding the varied journeys of the people we see in our day-to-day -day interactions. If you take a look at the list of doctoral dissertations in your program tonight, you can see that I'm not the only one here who was wondering about that. And if that program could include artifacts from all of our colleagues seated here, seated here with us, the program would surely be 100 pages long. What happens if we focus that much attention and effort on creating spaces of belonging for individuals who habitually find themselves on the margins. As a result of the advanced steps you've taken in your own education, you may find yourself in a position of leadership. Leaders tend to be busy people. There's always something to do when you're leading an organization. And complex organizations like schools, well, 
the metaphors are numerous. Spinning plates, rolling balls, ducks aligned or misaligned or perhaps even missing or lost. Uh, it's probably not often that we have time to consider the journey map down to the minute detail. And here's another tension for leaders, the tension of keeping in mind the big picture as well as the nitty gritty details of a person's lived experience. Put another way, attending to both the abstract and the concrete. It's a challenge to keep the big picture in mind while simultaneously taking the time to identify individual pain points, yet both perspectives are necessary. Earlier, I asked you to experience the tension that comes from the ideas of classification and interdependency. And really, I believe that's part of the work of leaders, holding contrasting ideas in a state of tension and helping make sense of what comes from it. So here are two more ideas to hold in tension. As leaders in systems of education, healthcare, and social services, we're simultaneously participants in and disruptors of those systems. In my own field of education, I recently came across a researcher who described schools as bastions of false positivity, where school stakeholders may be reluctant to admit that problems exist. This is especially the case when school-related problems are associated with marginalized persons with whom stake stakeholders do not identify. Day-to-day -day activities in the school year occupy so much time that for students, they lose momentum, or sorry, <laughs> that Initiatives aimed toward creating greater inclusivity and care for students lose momentum or buy-in. Leaders often find themselves too busy to make important changes. But sometimes I think that we inhibit change by adopting an all or nothing mentality, letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. To illustrate that point, I'd like you to think about your own journey, your journey that led you here tonight. I won't speak for anyone but myself, but I would definitely not use the word perfect to describe my doctoral journey. It was many things. Insightful, frustrating, challenging, and rewarding are all words I'd use to describe the past few years. And it's likely that you also found yourself balancing a full-time job, perhaps being a parent, and being a full-time student. It was difficult, definitely not perfect. And as I reflect on my journey, I think about the people who I've interacted with who have made that journey better. The people who made me feel like I belonged on this journey were crucial to the success I achieved. One of the highlights of being a doctoral student these past few years has been to develop a deep connection with the teachers and students in the program. The chance to learn from one another has been invaluable. I want to acknowledge and thank the UNE faculty and staff for how they helped each of us on our journey and if you're like me, I can think of so many other people who removed barriers from my path. Dissertation advisors, student support specialists, families, and colleagues. To those supporters and allies, I hope my fellow graduates will allow me to speak for them when I say thank you. From the vantage point of someone who is graduating tonight, there is a profound sense of interconnectedness among us. None of us could have achieved what we've achieved alone. And now that we've crossed this milestone and achieved a personal and professional goal, questions linger in my mind. What can I do to make someone else's journey easier, or better, or more joyful, or filled with a stronger sense of belonging? In order to answer that question, it requires us to listen intently to the challenges and the struggles of the people that we work with, our colleagues, our students, our patients, and our clients. And then we must act. Now is the time when the work begins again and we put into practice all that we learned during our time of scholarship. Class of 2023, as you go forth from this graduation and embark on your next journey, I wanna challenge you to remember that belonging is not a destination. It's a characteristic of the journey and creating spaces of belonging requires courage, vulnerability, and compassion. May you find the courage to be yourself, the vulnerability to connect deeply with others, and the compassion to embrace the differences that make us human. Hopefully one of the lessons you are taking away from your time at UNE is that you are not alone. You are part of a larger network of human beings who are all seeking to belong. We're all reflections of each other, and I'm proud to stand with you today. Congratulations, class of 2023, and good luck.
Thank you, Doug. Thank you for your thoughtful remarks. At this time, let's begin the hooding of the candidates. I would like to welcome Dr. Andrea Disk to hood the following, Doctor of Education in Educational Leadership Candidates. Placing of this hood symbolizes completion of the Doctor of Education in Educational Leadership degree. Jessica Alfareri. <laughs> Denise, <laughs> Denise Arkoskis. Aaron Lynn Beal. <laughs> Douglas Joseph Beam. Melinda Jane Bixby. Ashley Elizabeth Bratsis. <laughs> Allison Breen. <laughs> Trisha Ann Campbell. Michelle L. Carlson. <laughs> Margaret M. Shamira. <laughs> Lynn Cobus Diagnostino. Michael John Daniels. James Donovan. Sarah. Barnes Darty <laughs> Laura Margaret Graves <laughs> Whitney Amber Harper Karen Ellen Hopkins. <laughs> Randall Martin Hopkins. Okay. 
Kathleen Ann Hughes Butcher. Ivory Teen Jeffries. <laughs> Kathleen Mildred Jenkins Brown. Sherry. <laughs> Sherry Jordan. Carl W. Kerpel. Kimberly Marie Kalasia. Laura Leah Larson. <laughs> Jocelyn J. Lockhart. <laughs> Colton Hal McDonald. Allison Jane Mannion. <laughs> Amy Hoffman Mercado. Corey Munsey. <laughs> Nadim Nuzrat. Angela Suzanne Olton. <laughs> Tanya Lee Pinkham. <laughs> Bruce Carl Preston, Jr. Eric Pulley. <laughs> Lauren Catherine Papecki. Laurel Record Cole. Anthony Lucas Redgrave. Michelle Rogers. Okay. 
Rachel E. Sieber Conine. Kayla Sikora. Matthew Jerome Smith. Laverne Francis Sturtevant. Charles Clayton Swan. Melanie Thomas. Aaron Q. Twombly. Quinn Tatsu Ahin Ayahara. Michelle T. Webb. Christina Marie Wanton. Phyllis Zimmerman. Congratulations to the Doctor of Education candidates. It is my pleasure to invite Dr. Ann Harrington to hood the Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study Candidates. Placement of this hood symbolizes completion of the Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study. Will the candidates for the Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study please step forward? Carissa Anastasio. Brittany Nicole Gerwick. Ryan Michael Giberson. Kelly Ina Gunnison. Allison Catherine Hansen. Sarah J. Edris. Carolyn Marie Berlage Schwartz. Congratulations to the Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study candidates.
It is my pleasure to now invite Jason as Dorian to hood the Master of Science in Education candidates. Placement of this hood symbolizes completion of the Master of Science in Education degree. Will the candidates for the Master of Science in Education please step forward? Megan N. Booker. Kristen Mariah O'Connor Rector. I saw that. Kirsten Favorite Smith. Annetta Wimpeka. Mary Frances Kirschenbaum. <laughs> Emma Rose Everett. <laughs> Jessica Ann Schnitzer. Zachary Renault. <laughs> Nicole Noel Morton. <laughs> Matthew Charles Downs. Alyssa Elizabeth Della Porta. <laughs> Tammy J. Cargill. <laughs> Kaya Burton. Congratulations to the Master of Science in Education candidates. It is my pleasure to invite Dr. Ellie Dodge to hood the Master of Science in Applied Nutrition candidates. Placement of this hood symbolizes completion of the Master of Science in Applied Nutrition degree. Would the candidates for the Master of Science in Applied Nutrition please step forward? Kelsey L. Davis. Jenny Gonzalez. Lindy J. Kelly. Jacqueline M. Lignac. Tara Murray. Tori Fairchild Smedley. <laughs> Timothy J. Vile. <laughs> Jessica Will.
congratulations to the Master of Science in Applied Nutrition candidates. It is my pleasure to invite Matt Kazabinski to hood the Master of Science in Health Informatics candidates. Placement of this hood symbolizes completion of the Master of Science in Health Informatics. Would the candidates please step forward? Eunice Kayang. Congratulations to our Master of Science in Health Informatics candidates. It is my pleasure to keep Matt Kazabinski here to hood the Master of Health of Healthcare Administration candidates. Placement of this hood symbolizes completion of the Master of Science in Healthcare Administration degree. Would the candidates please step forward? William R. Brown III. <laughs> Corey Joseph Dieterichs. Congratulations to the Master of Healthcare Administration candidates. It is my pleasure to invite Dr. Carol Ewing White to hood the Master of Public Health candidates. Placement of this hood symbolizes completion of the Master of Public Health degree. Would the candidates please come forward? Adelia Aguirre. <laughs> Morgan Brady. Natalie D. Burt Carroll. <laughs> Melissa D. Casalucci. <laughs> Mindy Lynn Cembrelli. Jennifer Chalfie. <laughs> Naomi Diaz. <laughs> Brianna Janae Green. Alexis Michelle Hankerson. <laughs> Ashley Erica Hawkins. <laughs> La Bea Combongo.
Amanda Marie Kukta. Douglas Lobel. Kaniki Lola. Fadia Lovansky. <laughs> Melissa Celeste Lux. <laughs> Rowan Mahdi. Brian R. McElpine. <laughs> Laura Mary Elizabeth McCoy. <laughs> Nasokolo. Evans Nadama <laughs> Stephanie D. Nichols. Francisco Javier Noriega. Iola Aramid Elizabeth Oguenco. Nokahari. Oka Wina Dia Esamoeda <laughs> Rachel Mialu Wechi. Helen Theodora Price Wharf. <laughs> Jennifer Price. Bruce. <laughs> Kyle Anthony Rich. Priscilla Ajay Sarkoti. Nicole Mary Tagliente. Emilio Martinez Walker. Shamane Washington. <laughs> K. 
Catherine Ruby Whitney. Leslie Rivas Zuniga. Congratulations to the Master of Public Health candidates. It is my pleasure to invite Wanda Anderson to hood the Master of Social Work candidates. Placement of this hood symbolizes the completion of the Master of Social Work degree. Would the candidates please step forward? Siobhan Marie St. Laurent. Julia Francis Cadell. Rachel Suzanne Clark. Jamie Lee Sear. Gabriella Lauren DeValentin. <laughs> Alyssa Ann Didone. <laughs> Portia Latrice Dowdy. Savannah Marie Dutel. Dominique Flagg. Sheila Diane Grant Miller. Jennifer Elizabeth Hargis. Jordan Thomas Herbert. <laughs> Clyde Antonio Hillard. <laughs> Justin Janda <laughs> Tobian Kills in Water Emily Ann Craig. Andrea Teresa LaSalle. Angelique Loretta LaFon Garant. Matthew Ryan Leach. Altina. Altina Bernice Morgan Stewart. Like 
Melissa Christine Riopel. <laughs> Ashley Marie Restali. Maya Colleen Jimmick. Yeah. I've got a copy of it. Felicia Jane Hernandez. Carolina Maria Stetson. <laughs> Jessica Marie Talbot. <laughs> Congratulations to the Master of Social Work candidates. At this time, we have one more Master of Public Health candidate. Would Dr. Carol Ewan White please step forward? Smith Patel. Congratulations to all of our candidates. At this time, I'd like to welcome Felicia Hernandez to the podium for our final commencement address. Felicia joins us from Dorchester, Massachusetts. She started her education at Bunker Hill Community College and graduated with a bachelor's degree from UMass Boston. She's a full-time clinician for inclusion family counseling in Brockton, Massachusetts, where she does in-home and outpatient therapy. Welcome, Felicia. <laughs> Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, esteemed faculty, and graduates. My name is Felicia Hernandez, and I've been asked to speak tonight. I started my academic journey here at the University of New England in 2017. I was hoping to be finished in two years. Well, here we are in 2023, and I'm elated to be here. <laughs> I had a long journey where the odds were definitely stacked against me. I survived a house fire, relocation, and moving back into a reconstructed house, all while battling health issues and caring for my dad and four children who had their own issues. How did I do it? Determination and hard work. Who decides to obtain a 64-credit master's degree when the options were so easy? Option one forego a master's degree and muddle along with what I had been doing, feeling unfulfilled and ineffective. Option two, just get the master's in something I was used to, but enter a career I really didn't want. Or finally, option three, follow my calling. I never do anything the easy way, it seems. Social work is my calling. Every time I thought, this is too hard, I'm never going to finish, I'm not meant for higher education, I also thought, I can't give up without a fight. 
I have to give this my all because this is what I really want. During my time at UNE, I had some supportive instructors and some not so supportive, but I learned how to better approach people <laughs> and how to be a social worker. I learned emotional regulation. I can be a bit volatile. <laughs> I loved working on projects with other students. As much as I hated recording myself in videos, it gave me an opportunity to think and to interact with other students. Then a former professor's words came to mind. If it was easy, everyone would do it. And thank you for that, Jennifer O'Neill. I guess it is an honor to have my master's in social work. I know this because of what I get to do on a daily basis. I get to help people find solutions to real world problems. I love what I do. For the first time in my life, I feel like I have a place in the world. I was devastated in August when I lost my dad unexpectedly. He was supposed to be sitting here tonight. But I believe his spirit is with me and he's telling me that it's about time. <laughs> my dad was a retired naval officer who worked, his, who worked his way up through the ranks with no college. He finally earned an associate's in business management on the GI Bill when he first got out in the 70s. My mom scored two years college on the Air Force entrance exam in 1948, but my grandmother threw the recruiter down the stairs and didn't let her join the service. <laughs> my mom went on to become a professional singer. My parents met in a club in Boston where she was performing. I'm sure I get my determination from my parents. It's my only hope that I can set an example for those who think that they can't, because they can. Don't go down without a fight. Fight for what you want in this life, because you are your own cheering squad. And remember, it won't be easy, but it will be well worth it. Never think in terms of months or years. Do everything in your own time frame, whether it be minutes, hours, or a day. There's no rush to get on with your life. We can't change the past, and we can't see the future. Continue on your own path, no matter how winding it seems. You will get to your destination. I wish everybody here tonight continued success in all your endeavors, however big or small they might be. And thank you for listening to me tonight. Thank you, Felicia. That was very inspiring. Thank you, graduates. Now we ask you to stand, turn, and face the audience. Thank you. You can now be seated. I was going to have to prompt you to give a round of applause, but I guess it didn't need any prompting. That's awesome. To our graduates, you have accomplished so very much. With your new degree, you now hold a valuable responsibility to serve your community, to contribute to our society, to improve everything that you encounter, and to leave it better than you found it. It is tough to find the right words to celebrate such grand occasions as this evening. As I searched to find the right words to close the ceremony, I found the wise words of Nelson Mandela. There is no passion to be found in playing small, in settling for a life that is less than the one that you are capable of living. Each person in the class of 23 has decided to play big to pursue new knowledge and gain additional skills. You have done all of the above and have earned this opportunity to celebrate. Once again, congratulations. We are so very proud of you. 
We will continue this evening's celebration with a reception on the campus quad. The UNE team has orange lanyards on and they'll be pointing the way should you need direction. This concludes our hooding ceremony. Please remain seated until our graduates and platform party have recessed. We look forward to continuing the celebration with you at the reception. Thank you. Thank you.